Come on in, please. Carl Rowe, Fox News contributor. Carl, welcome to the program. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Stuart. You know what's ticked me off more than anything else? It's the coastal elites sniping at the good Christian folk of Texas getting on with the job. I hate it. What say you? Uh, I'm in total agreement, starting with that stupid cartoon in Politico. But also these unbelievably bizarre remarks that somehow or another Houston deserved it because Houston doesn't have zoning laws. Uh, I would remind uh, the liberal critics of Houston's uh, pro-growth policies that Hurricane Sandy hit one of the most, um, one of the municipal areas in America that it has the most regulations about what you can build and where you can build it, namely the greater New York area. And uh, yep. the New Orleans had very strict building codes and zoning laws. Didn't help it when Hurricane Katrina came ashore. I want you to assess President Trump's response to this so far. Uh, he's donating a million dollars from his own pocket. He's visiting Texas. He was there this week. He's going back tomorrow. Uh, and also, he's arranging this, I think it's a $5.9 billion package, an initial down payment on the, on the, uh, uh, the recovery effort. It looks like... He's doing a good job, and it looks like that $6 billion should sail through without much opposition. I think that's right. He has been doing a good job. Uh, his comments have been good. It was smart of him to come to Texas early, though it was equally smart of him not to go to Houston, where his presence would have interfered with immediate rescue efforts. Uh, most important of all, he has told his cabinet officials, be responsive to the state of Texas. And he's fortunate in this regard. Most people think the federal government is in charge in disasters like uh, Harvey. Not so. The governor of the affected state is in charge. And we've got a terrific governor here, Governor Abbott, who has been planning for a moment like this for months, uh, training his people, holding tabletop exercises, uh, going through, methodically going through what might need to be done uh, in the event of an incident like this. And as a result, he and his team have been well prepared to say to the federal government, here's what we need. And in addition, we've had state and local government, unlike in Katrina, remember how the New Orleans Police Department sort of disintegrated and there was little or no, uh, you know, the mayor literally abandoned the command center? Yeah. Well, in Texas, particularly in, in Harris County, we've seen the leadership of county executive, the county judge, we call him in Texas, Ed Emmett, and the mayor of Houston, Sylvester Turner, working seamlessly with state and federal officials to make certain that everything is done that needs to be done. And... Uh, the president's lucky that he's got good allies like that working in these jobs because uh, they, 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 without them, he couldn't, he couldn't be as effective as he is and, and they couldn't be as effective as they are. Carl, I've got to talk to you about tax cuts. About an hour ago on this program, Gary Cohn was on with us. He gave a, a sort of an outline of the plan that's going to be presented, a lower corporate tax rate, a slightly lower top income tax rate on wealthier people, on high income earners, with some of the money clawed back from getting rid of the, uh, the um, what's the word, the, uh, from uh, the state and local taxes, the, uh, the, deduction. the, the deduction. exemption, the deduction. That's right. Yeah. They eliminate the deduction for state and local taxes, which actually is a hit, especially on New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, California. It, it seemed to me like a middle of the road deal, which could get some Democrat support. Uh, it could. I think he also touched on double taxation of the profits of American companies abroad. Uh, we're the only major industrialized country that does that, that double taxes the profits of American subsidiaries on their foreign sales. Uh, this could be a great way to bring lots of revenue that today is stranded abroad for fear if they bring it back to the United States, it takes a huge haircut. I think all of these, it, it, clearly his mindset is, what do we need to do to grow the economy? And so uh, they're willing to take the tough thing and say, we want to lower corporate tax rate because that's going to grow the economy. We want, to, uh, we want to limit how much the government can take from anybody in their personal income because that will help grow the economy. We want to have a territorial tax system uh, like the rest of the industrialized world so that we're competitive and create jobs and grow the economy. And um, I thought uh, the administration's on a good path. I, I, I can't see how that would not be attractive to that vast bulk of people who are in the middle in Congress. Not the far right, the far left, but those, that bunch of people in the middle. This is surely attractive to them. Well, it is, but remember, inside the Democratic caucus, you've got two things going on. One is the group of sort of pro-business moderates is shrinking inside the Democratic Party. There are more Elizabeth Warrens and fewer, uh, you know, uh, jo uh, Joe Manchins. There are a lot more Bernie Sanders influence and a lot less blue dog Democrat influence. So that's one thing that's going on. And second of all, you can bet 
that when this battle is engaged, that the hard left of the Democratic Party is going to be making threats against anybody who cooperates with, with the Trump administration and with House and Senate Republican uh, tax, ma ta tax riders on anything that is a reasonable compromise. And we'll, we'll, we're going to see now how much the sort of the pro-business moderate wing of the Democratic Party uh, has to stand up to that kind of uh, attacks from the left. You're a Texas guy yourself, I think. Um, I think you are. I am. And the I rest am. of the country is in awe at the Texas can-do spirit. Take a victory lap, son. <laughs> well, I wrote about it in my column yesterday, and it's so heartwarming uh, to hear the, to, to see these pictures and hear these stories. But we are a can-do people. We're a resilient people. We get, we get knocked down, we stand back up, and we get back into it. And uh, uh, this is going to be a long, hard recovery. There's still a lot of tough moments ahead, particularly over in the Golden Triangle on the Louisiana-Texas border, Beaumont, Port Arthur, uh, Orange. These are going to be these places are hard hit, as you'll see shortly in the footage from Beaumont. 118,000 people live in that town, and it's flooded. Every bit of it's flooded. And uh, but you know what? We are a can-do people. It's why we are we are Texans. It's why we're a dynamic, growing economy. It's why everybody wants to come here and live here, and a lot of them are moving here, and we welcome them. Uh, there, I'm, I wasn't born here, but I got here as soon as I could, and by God, uh, there's nothing worse than a converted Texan. <laughs> nothing worse than a converted Very well said, sir. Carl Rove, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it, sir. Thanks thank very you, George. Much. You bet.